you quietly wrote another book and and released it. I mean, it's not out yet. You can pre-order it now on Amazon. You yes. will not get it till July 16th. July. Yeah, something to wait for like Christmas. It's one of those things that you go, ooh, I ordered it. Look at that young little lad. <laughs> it's Christmas in July. And how embarrassing you can see that I have in my cart here tree stump uh, shelving. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> uh, when did the process of writing this second book begin? Uh, it was probably uh, it's over a year ago. These things always take so long. Like it, it's when you listen to actors talk about movies, it's like, yes, we started five years ago. You're like, how the what? five what, years? What Jesus. took so long? But this was uh, a, a little over a year ago, I guess, and. Um, I wrote it with Johnny Russo, who was also um, one of the co-writers for Permanently Suspended, and uh, my first book. Uh, so I went down to Florida and worked um, with him for a little while, and we did some over-the-internet uh, stuff, and um, just put together a, another book, kind of uh, takes up where uh, Permanently Suspended ended. It's a little more... It's not as biographical as it is kind of telling about um, working in broadcasting and cancel culture days and uh, being fired and uh, getting Compound Media up and running and uh, doing a show with Artie Lang. Uh, and then, you know, I, I finally, after 10 years, sort of hammered out a truce with Opie. Ooh. Yeah. And and now this book is just going to destroy it because oh, no. since it was over a year ago and, <laughs> oh, and the, no. the, yeah, the past year, uh, I, I, I did include some more, you know, kind of Opie shitting on Opie and bashing uh, Opie a little bit. Uh, so, Opie you know, lore. I hope he understands. Which, which the fans I don't will love. Him. <laughs> I don't expect him to. But uh, did you give him any kind of a heads up like, hey, uh just letting you know there's maybe, no. maybe a little book coming out. We haven't spoken directly. Uh, we kind of, um, like, when when I was in the hospital for my procedure, uh, I uh, he reached out to my brother and asked if I was okay. And, you know, my brother and him spoke a little bit on the phone. Uh, but we didn't. Like, he didn't text me or anything. And, uh, and then he... He, oh, oh, something was posted about uh, two uh, sports commentator hosts that were yelling at each other, or, or one guy got mad at the other guy for saying something. So I just posted, oh, maybe, maybe he was mad because he was eating grapes, which is a reference to uh, the, a fight me and Opie had on the air during the ONA show about me eating grapes. Green like, or purple? Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was called the grape <laughs> argument. And um, so I, I put that down and he responded with uh, maybe he texted him, uh, inadvertently texted him, calling him a cunt. So <laughs> that's what oh. I did. I did that once to right. Opie. I inadvertently texted him when I meant to text Jimmy. And uh, I said, the cunt won't even look at me. And uh, it, I sent it to Opie. The horror in my fucking soul when i hit send and i looked and and it was opie's name and then i just saw his phone go Vroom! on the desk i'm like oh here here it is i got no excuse like i can't come up with an excuse quick enough this you is could just grab his phone run to the bathroom throw it in the toilet like, <laughs> i don't know what came over me it's a joke it was a joke i flushed your phone down the toilet it's funny <laughs> o &A. funny lighten up <laughs> maybe that's the only thing i could have done i could have <laughs> slow motion put on aviators <laughs> i don't know oh but no. uh yeah so so that was the only kind of contact we've had in about 10 years so um it, it kind of made it like all right i could do my shows and i could talk to other people without shitting on opie uh which is fine and that's kind of i i like it i kind of like this you know i leave him alone he leaves me alone and we you know just go through our lives but uh, then I remembered, oh, right, I wrote a book. <laughs> I 
and it's terrible because it like goes out to a bunch of people and it's a written record and uh people can you know send him excerpts from it about him so i expect this to completely uh turn it from a cold war to a hot war again oh um, no but so be it <laughs> such is right, life when you have a new book you send it out in advance to a few people to get maybe like quotes or, or right. uh, like I read this book. It's the best book ever. I think it'd be funny if you got a quote back from Opie, like, Hey, someone sent me this book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Yeah. 10 out of 10. You piece of shit. <laughs> this was a great book. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know, but it's got a lot of things in it about uh, what it's like to be canceled and, uh, I get into a few of the social issues about uh, some of the troubles with violence in uh, certain communities and uh, some of my takes and uh, perhaps solutions for these problems. But, uh, yeah, it's 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 got a bunch of stuff and it's not so so autobiographical as it is uh, about me, how I am as a person, more so than the dates and times of events that happen. Did uh, so you worked with Johnny on this? Did he? Uh, what was that process like? Was, drink through the? Did he drink, drink through the whole thing? Drinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we. Uh, I went to his place down in Florida, and uh, uh, we spent uh, a lot of time uh, on this, and there was a lot of drinking involved. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, it does uh, help bring up memories, though. Yeah, yeah. It. It. it hey, my memory's fine. <laughs> It, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, you, you, you're less inhibited. Uh, some, some of the greatest uh, writers in history were uh, raging alcoholic drunks. So, um, you know. I love your Twitter feed. I love when you do a quote tweet of, of certain demographics fighting, uh, uh, making a mess, just being uh, generally kind of uh, untoward, as they say. Do you ever think... Yeah. Do you ever think, like, is the algorithm just serving up a lot of this to cause division? Uh, <laughs> and, and it's an easy thing to be pissed off about. Or do you truly feel like the crime has significantly gone up? Or perhaps it's both. Boy, it's so hard to uh, to qualify that because, you know, we're living in times where things are available to us that weren't in the past. So uh, you can't really say, did this never happen uh is this something that you like you said the algorithm or the fact that i'm exposed to it more i see it more so that's going to change my my take on it but i truly don't think so i i the sheer amount of videos of people in the black community just losing their mind now i've rarely tried to discuss the whys of the whole thing like why is this happening is it justified? It, but you can't deny that it is indeed happening. There are mental patients out there. Uh, in you know, I've seen every color and and race and religion acting like uh, retards um, on on uh, in videos. But there is a certain take with the black community that it's just. This, this, the, the violence of it and the, um, they just not carry the fighting with a baby in their arm with one oh, hand. And, in the shoe and, store. Yeah. This it, baby yes. Was like the shoe crying. store fight. Just, Hold on. Mommy has to fight. <laughs> yeah. It's like any mother, the number one priority, you'll learn this very soon, Chrissy, oh, is boy. to protect the child. Like that is paramount over everything. People, once they have kids, and animals do this, once they have a, a, a child or a kit or whatever, uh, they go into just defend that thing mode. It's to keep the lifeline going. <laughs> it, it's very biological. And to see a complete disregard for children during these fighting episodes, I just don't see that anywhere else. And I don't think you could just serve that up with an algorithm. You should never see that. <laughs> there shouldn't be enough videos of it to make it an algorithm. So even as I, I try know. to search on Twitter, black people fighting in shoe store, it, it's like twenty-seven videos come up. Oh. I can't oh, even yeah. find the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, that's <laughs> see exactly. 
So, you know, again, the, the whys of it, uh, you could argue that yeah, you'll get a lot of different answers. But when I'm called racist, because I point these things out, uh, they are indeed happening. I am not commenting on something or making these uh, ridiculous, accusa- ridiculous accusations uh, that things are happening. They are happening. And, and it is a problem. And it needs to be at least addressed. People my God, have to at least be able to discuss it. People always talk about the, we need to have that tough discussion about race. It's a hard thing to do, but, you know, check your pride at the door, white man, and and talk about racism as a white person. And, and it's like, dude, can you guys be honest for a second? There, There's a huge fucking problem in the black community when right. it comes you, to- you wanna- you want to open up only a part of this? You want to like talk about like some white people being racist, but you don't want to talk about why people yeah. feel the way they yeah. do. And like, when yeah. did, if you break it down, like why is pattern recognition being racist? And you think about where the backlash comes from. And it's like, those people make their entire careers and income on, yeah. on pushing a certain agenda. And if, <laughs> yes. and if you pop that bubble, well, it's like, well, fuck. Yeah. Now I have to go work at an Amazon factory, I guess. <laughs> Is your love for Star Trek in the book? <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't think I talk specifically about Star Trek. Although one of my favorite moments ever to happen was when William Shatner was a guest on the ONA show at uh, Sirius Satellite Radio. And if you remember, uh, the studios were just glass walls. People in the hallway could walk by and look in. Uh, it was all glass studio. So William Shatner was sitting outside um, the studio after he did an appearance on our show, waiting for his ride or whatever. And I went up and reenacted Spock's death scene from Wrath of Khan through the glass. And I wanted him to come up and cry. Uh, and he was just waving me off going, get out of here. Shut up. He, was, he wasn't being oh, the sh- loving spa, uh, Kirk that was uh, loving to Spock during... Uh, during his death scene. And I was, you know, ship out of danger. <laughs> you have been and always shall be my friend. And, you know, <laughs> Shatner's a weird dude. <laughs> wow, that's so interesting. I feel like not that many people have had an interaction like that with him. Oh, yeah, it was it was one of the, because I'm such a huge original series Star Trek fan. And to have Captain Kirk on the other side of a glass wall while I, reenact Spock's scene and have him just disgusted <laughs> by what I'm doing and, and telling me to go fuck myself. And it was perfect. It was a perfect moment. Will compound offer signed copies for pre-order? Ooh. Yes. Yes. When they uh, print these things up, uh, this is the way the last book worked and I don't see it not working this way. Uh, this time around, it's the same publisher. Uh, we get boxes of books and I sit there for hours on end signing these things. And then they go out to the people that pre-ordered. And uh, last time, I think I took, I took out $1,000 in crisp $100 bills. And every so often, I would put a $100 bill in one of the books that are being sent out to people that pre-ordered. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, yeah. There's probably still books out there with hundreds in them and no one fucking ever got it. Uh, but yeah, I'll probably do the same thing this time around too. Kind of a little, little incentive to a pre-order. Because I just pre-ordered on Amazon. Would that be, that wouldn't be among those books. It would, maybe yeah, because the, the uh, Amazon gets the books through the publisher. Okay. So uh, there, there will be a certain amount of uh, signed books. They'll be random. And then if you want them signed, you could send them to uh, uh, South Carolina. Now, <laughs> the Compound Studios, where I uh, visit quite often. Ant's first book was very good. <laughs> I read it, but the audiobook version Read by Mr. Kumia is even better. I look forward to the new book. Thank you, Ant. Yes, uh, this this new book also will be an uh, uh, audio book. I will read it myself. Ooh. I I did that with the first book, and um, I, it is not an easy thing to do. And I'm not saying it's hard like roofing or or putting <laughs> an air conditioning duct work. Um, it's, it's literally just difficult to do because you have to cut out and redo the lines when you say, uh, what oh, you, you realize man. how many times you go, uh, uh, or you stutter, like just talking here. We're just having a natural conversation. You don't really notice it unless you really get stuck. Um, say, um, 
I, I, right there, I'd have to go, okay, let's take you another, another take um, on this paragraph. You get through one paragraph without a full paw, and you feel like, oh, nice. Put that in the can. So it takes hours and hours, and uh, but it's fun, and the people like it because you could give your own inflection on some of the stuff you're you're uh, reading. So I'll be doing it for this book too, Mister Saint Ranger Stranger, 1959. Ooh, I can't wait. Um, Gina wants to know there was a pink slip hidden in mine. I pretended not to see it. Oh yes, his autographed book. How did it look when you put it on? <laughs> <laughs> He's so old. He's as old as me. A pink slip. No one gets pink slips when they're fired anymore. A pink slip. A pink slip is like a, it sounds like no. a porn about a prolapsed. Uh, <laughs> you get an well, email if you're lucky these days telling you to clean your shit out. Security yeah. will be down to escort you out of the building. There are no uh, pink slips. Pink slip. uh, are, you racing, are you racing for pinks too, Gino? <laughs> yeah. Hey, we're racing for pinks. Uh, Oof. Everybody, go and pre-order now. Spare me on Amazon, uh, or maybe if you have a Barnes and Noble nearby. Oh, Barnes and Noble. <laughs> or maybe a Borders Books and Music a or a bookstore. <laughs> I have not been. I'll tell you the last time I was in a bookstore. I think it was Jim Norton. With Jim Norton, he was putting a book out, and uh, we went to his book signing in a bookstore. It was like over a decade ago. Oh, so wow. yeah, bookstore is the brick and mortar bookstore. Amazon is a dream come true. It is the greatest thing. I have bought so many things since I've been up here, studio stuff that I've needed to keep the show going, Christmas presents, birthday presents, all the shit you need to buy, all the parts to put a computer together. To literally oh, build yeah. a computer. And I never had to leave the house. Yeah. It's like, you, what, you want, you want tortoise food? You want it tomorrow? Great. There Who's it is. Who's to top that? You're getting, I have been in bed at three in the morning going to order something. And it's like, we'll be delivered today if you order it in the next couple of hours. Like, is he waiting outside with this? Is someone looking at my wish list <laughs> or my in cart? And they know, and they've already brought it here for me to hit that button, and then they'll drop it on my stoop. It's astounding, the logistics that goes behind uh, something like Amazon. But it's a wonder of the world, I swear. It's the ninth wonder of the world. Yes. Uh, Pre-order Anthony's book. Now, you won't get it till July. You'll probably order it, forget about it. But then in July, you'll be like, oh, my God, it's here. How exciting. Yes, it'll be delivered. You'll be like, oh, my God, Anthony's book. I'll remind right. you. Love you guys. Thank you for the chats. Thank you for the comments. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye. All right. Love you guys. Oh, I don't even want to leave. This candle smells so good. I don't want to leave. All right. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye. Love you all. Join the Discord. Feet. Love you all. Wow. You guys are awesome. Don't even get it. Bye, guys. Bye. Now I'm really leaving. Love you. Bye.